Hello, welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp, and I'm the executive editor of Day Diversity. We would like to thank you for joining the current 2014 installment of the monthly Day Diversity webinar series, Real World Data Governance with Bob Seiner. Today, Bob will be discussing governance risk and compliance. Just a couple of things to get us started. Due to a large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Or if you like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag RWDG, Real World Data Governance. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now let me introduce to you our speaker for today, Bob Seiner. Bob is the President and Principal of KIK Consulting and Educational Services and the publisher of the Data Administration Newsletter, TDAN.com. Bob has been a recipient of the Damon Professional Award for significant and demonstrable contributions to the data management industry. Bob specializes in non-invasive data governance, data stewardship, and metadata management solutions. And with that, I will give the floor to Bob to get today's webinar started. Hello and welcome. Thank you much, Shannon. Thank you, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. And again, I'm always happy that you're here with me to uh, to attend the webinar. Um, the the uh, continuation of a of a series. Uh, this, as Shannon mentioned, this webinar will be focusing on governance, risk, and compliance. And it's not. Uh, it shouldn't be something new to you that we see these three terms being discussed together. In fact, when Shannon and I were working about a year ago, putting together a list of webinars for 2014, we came up with this subject. We thought that this subject would be very important to most people that are working in the data industry, whether their focus is on governance or on risk or on compliance. What I found is very quickly after those conversations and setting up this as a topic, those three terms are used together all the time. In fact, there's a, a common acronym of GRC for organizations that talk about governance, risk, and compliance together. And I'm going to share with you some information that's going on in the industry, some information that's, um, that I've seen relevant to some of the organizations that I've been working with. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about how we bring those three items together. And you know, for me, it's, it's interesting that the term governance comes first because, to me, governance is the way to get to the end of having risk or, or managing risk in an organization management managing compliance within the organization. So rather than calling it risk governance and compliance or other any other order, governance first. I mean, it seems to be the theme from everything that I'm reading, everything that the clients that are focusing in these areas, um, they need to, to put that first. They recognize that they need to have accountability. They need to have uh, make certain that risk is being managed and that compliance is being managed. Government is not making things optional to us when it comes to compliance, when it comes to managing risk, not only data risk, but other risk within the organization. People need to be held accountable. And really, if you know how I define data governance, uh, it shouldn't be a surprise to you that, that governance, risk, and compliance seem to go together. It's like peanut butter and jelly, I guess, so to speak. So um, before we get started, I want to talk about the upcoming webinars in the series for the balance of the year. Next month on November 20th, right before the Thanksgiving holiday, we will be talking about selecting the right data governance approach. We'll talk about non-invasive data governance. We'll talk about invasive data governance, command and control, all sorts of different types of governance and, and the different ways that organizations are approaching putting programs into place. And in December, we will be talking about big data governance. Big data seems to continue to be all the rage, even though we... Uh, a lot of people at least agree that it's not very clearly defined. We're going to talk about big data in terms of governance. And is such a thing as big data governance, why, what it is, and why it's necessary within most organizations. So those are the upcoming webinars in the months of November and December. Um, real quickly before I get started, I also want to let you know that the book that I've been talking about for several years is finally available uh, through Amazon, through Barnes & Nobles, through Techniques, uh, Publishing well, it's called Invasive Data Governance, The Path of Least Resistance and Greatest Success. 
So please, uh, if you get a chance, take a look at that, and hopefully it will open your eyes to some alternative approaches to putting data governance into place. Also, I wanted to highlight that the KIK Consulting website has been updated by my nephew, uh, and it went live in June, so it's a big change from what it looked like before. And last but not least, I want to talk about the Data Governance Winter Conference, which is a data diversity event and a DevTech International event, and that will be taking place in Fort Lauderdale in December, in the, the, uh, the 8th through the 12th of December. And I'll be giving a couple of presentations at that event, and I hope to see you there. Um, so let's talk about why we're all here today and what we're here to talk about in this specific webinar. Um, I want to share with you the abstract that I, I put, uh, we put out there online. Uh, hopefully that's what attracted you to this session. The target of the data governance programs is to first and foremost nail their regulatory and compliance requirements. It may be that, that may not be the fact with all organizations, but a lot of organizations are recognizing that they need to make certain that they follow the regulations that are imposed upon them, that they are compliant to the rules that they've defined inside their organization and the ones that are coming outside of the organization. And if most organizations already have risk management as a practice in their organizations. It may be under that name, it may be under some other names, but they're typically parts of the organization that have the responsibility for doing risk management as a practice. And part of risk management is to apply accountability for managing that risk within the organization. So again, the similarities between risk management and the governance abound. Even organizations that do not consider risk management the same thing as data governance, you'll see by what we're going to talk about here that there are a lot of similarities between the two practices. In fact, not only governance and risk, but governance, risk, and compliance. As I said before, um, you're seeing acronym GRC more often within organizations. And the question is, how well are organizations governing their data? How well are they managing risk? And how well are they being compliant, again, to those rules and regulations that are being thrown at them? Um, we'll talk a bit about, well, where should this reside? Should this be three separate functions? Should it be a single function? Should, should one part of the organization focus on all three? And what are some of the downfalls to not having these uh, efforts within the organization work in conjunction with each other. So we also talk about how compliance is not optional, nothing about regulatory and compliance mentioned optional, therefore really governance is not optional. It's, it's kind of interesting when I talk to a lot of organizations, um, they talk about having to uh, having to be very clear in what they expect to get out of governance in their organization. And the fear is that since the rules and the since the risk management and compliance are not optional, uh, and we need to hold people accountable for what they do with the data, not only people at the operational level, but people at the tactical and strategic levels as well. You know, governance is not optional. In fact, I had a client recently post on the top of the internal, actually the, the chief financial officer for an organization posted at the very top of their internal governance website that governance is not optional. So when we come to you and we tell you that you're a data steward because you have a relationship to the data and you need to be held accountable for that relationship, whether it's somebody who defines data or produces or uses data, that senior management is now starting to look at this and say, you know, governance isn't optional either. You can't opt out of being a data steward. You're basically a data steward because you have a relationship to the data. And by the way, governance is going to help you to help hold those people formally accountable the management of that data. So this is what we're going to cover in the session today. We'll talk about risk management versus data governance, and we're going to compare the two. We're going to talk risk management as the face of data governance, since in a lot of organizations, when they're asking why are they putting governance in place or what is governance being put in place to manage, oftentimes it's the risk within the organization. So oftentimes organizations, when they're asked, what purpose of governance it is to manage risk, it is to manage compliance, it is to improve the quality and the value of the data as well, but first and foremost, they want to manage the risk and they want to manage compliance around the data in their organization. We'll talk about measuring success of governance in terms of risk management. We'll talk about using risk in compliance to explain what governance is and what data governance or information governance is in particular, and we'll use this not optional thing that I've talked about here as kind of being the crutch that we can lean on. And if organizations say, well, we don't want to apply any 
any resources or we want to limit uh, the application of resources to, to governance in the organization. And, um, the question becomes, well, how are they going to manage the risk associated with the data? How are they going to comply to regulatory rules if, in fact, you don't have any formal means of putting governance in place in the organization? So we're going to talk about those subjects. What I usually like to do when I'm starting my webinars is begin with um, definitions. So you may have seen these definitions before. Uh, and if they're not, if they're new to you, then that's great as well. But the is that I've, I've kind of highlighted and I've even and make larger the letters associated or the words associated within these definitions that are really all, all what we're talking about here with governance, risk, and compliance. So when I talk about data governance as being the execution and enforcement of authority over the measurement of data and data-related resources, the word authority is the key term here, is we need to make certain that people know who has what responsibilities around the data what decision makes decisions are being made associated with the data has the right to be able to tell you that you will govern the data a particular way, what the rules are, and how we're going to execute and enforce on those rules. So the word authority isn't just thrown in there. Oftentimes, when organizations look at that definition, they cringe a little bit. They say that governance is about the execution and enforcement of authority. They think it's worded too strongly. And the truth is, at the end of the day, if you go to your senior management and you ask them what we really need governance to do in our organization, what they need to do is they need to execute and enforce authority. We can do it in, through a bunch of different ways. We can do it by hitting people over the head with a stick and telling them what to do. We can do it by formalizing accountability, So, because there's already accountability that exists within the organization. So the definition that I use for data stewardship is that data stewardship is the formalization of accountability. How are we going to govern data? We're going to do it through the formalization of accountability. And when it comes again to the risk management and it comes to compliance, the bottom is that we need to hold people accountable in their daily job. No matter what their relationship to the data is, if they define data, we want people to understand that they should take a look and see what data already exists before we go and define another version of the data. If they produce data, that they have an impact on the organization, how they in, enter the data, how they produce data, and certainly if they're a user of the data, we need to hold people formally accountable for how they um, how they use the data in the organization. Now, we can't expect to hold them accountable if we can't share with them the rules that are associated with, with again, governing that data. So part of the equation is going to be the metadata, the information about the rules, about risk management management, about compliance, that we need to share with individuals in the organization to help them to understand that they do have a relationship to the data, and that we're going to hold them formally accountable, and that we're going to execute and enforce authority to make certain that they're formally accountable. Um, even these are the definitions that I use. A lot of organizations will look at these definitions, and they'll say they're worded too strongly. So what I wanted to do is, again, share with you some of the definitions that some of my clients have adopted. I've taken the two definitions, the definition of data governance and the definition of data stewardship, and they brought them together. So in one organization, they said they were going to formalize behavior around the definition, production, and usage of data to manage risk and improve quality and usability of selected data. If you notice here, they said they were going to manage risk first and then improve quality and the usability of selected data. I'm not sure that there's an implied order of events there, but to me, if they're stating that they want to manage risk first, that becomes the kind of the highlight. That becomes what's most important to the governance program in the organization. Another organization said formalize and, and guide behavior. Again, it all comes back to enforcing that authority, that holding people formally accountable for how they find, produce, and use data within the organization. The one other definition that I wanted to share with you is the non-invasive data governance definition that I've used fairly often. And, and it's the practice of applying that formal accountability and behavior that I just spoke about through non-invasive roles to, to, and we apply governance to existing processes where we can. Really, the point of uh, my sharing this definition with you is the last bullet, is the fifth bullet under the practice of, and that is that a lot of organizations, again, put data governance in place to assure regulatory compliance, security, privacy, protection, and quality of the data. A little bit later in the webinar, I'll do, what I'm going to do is run through a couple of real quick case studies. I don't know if you'd call them case studies, but talk about several different types of organizations and why they've put governance in place and what they've put governance in place to focus on.
oftentimes you'll see that it comes down to following the rules that are associated with the data, managing the risk associated with data, and certainly complying to any of the regulatory controls that are being imposed upon us. John Asia describes how governance is applied, and again, the goal is to be transparent supportive and collaborative in our approach. So again, I talk a lot about non-invasive data governance. That's the name of the book that I, I mentioned earlier. The idea is that we need to manage risk and we need to comply to the internal and the external rules. Um, how you go about doing that is really up to you in your organization. And as I mentioned before, in next month's webinar, I'm going to talk about different approaches to data governance. Certainly, I'm going to emphasize that we want to try to stay as non-invasive as we can, and recognizing at some point, as one of my clients put it one time, is at some point you're going to need to stick, meaning that at some point you're going to need to enforce that authority. And, and it may not feel as non-invasive as you'd like, but all of going into uh, a taking an approach to be non-invasive in the first place oftentimes becomes much more accepted within organizations. So after Shannon and I had had brainstormed and come up with a list of different topics for this uh, this year's series uh, for uh, real-world data governance. We talked about risk and compliance, and I said going out and taking a look at, you know, what people talking about when it came to governance, risk, and compliance. And something that I found on the Internet, this is a, a nifty little graphic here that kind of put it all into perspective. And what I saw is that governance, risk management, and compliance is being labeled as GRC, for a lot of organizations and a lot of papers and a lot of things that you're going to read, if you see the acronym GRC, it oftentimes stands for Governance, Risk, and Compliance. And oftentimes that's the umbrella term that covers organizations' approach to to uh, to the, all of these levels of discipline across these three areas of the organization. So this graphic kind of sums it up pretty well. It says that ultimately the goal is business optimization. And how are we going to do that? We're going to do that through increased visibility, efficiency, accountability, and collaboration. And what are we going to make more visible? And what are we going to make more efficient? And how are we going to hold people accountable? We're going to hold it for the governance of the data, the risk associated with the data, the compliance associated with the data as well. And what I like about this diagram is you can kind of visualize the the circular, circular database looking thing in the middle of it as kind of spinning round and round. And you know, it's there and it's being supported by management. I've uh, attended my, my webinars and talking about data governance best practices. Management support sponsorship and understanding of governance and risk management and compliance tend to be the most important important best practice for organizations. How are we going to do that? We're going to do it through specific functions like IT and finance and audit and security and legal. We're going to put functions in place within our organizations to make sure that risk management is being handled, that compliance is being handled. And the truth is that the governance aspect of it is in trying to build it into what we do on an everyday basis. So the idea is that people in the organization, that almost anybody in the organization can be considered a steward, then want, especially if they have a specific relationship to the data, we want them to understand what the rules are. We want to, uh, them to understand how we're going to execute, execute and enforce authority over that data that they find, produce, and use. And we also want to help them to understand that they are going to be held formally accountable for what they're doing moving forward. So again, I thought this was an interesting graphic. The one thing that really stood out to me was the whole idea of accountability. Okay, so I can understand visibility and efficiency and collaboration when it comes to how organizations want to optimize. But it was interesting to me that they included the word accountability in here because again, that really tends to be everything of which governance is all about, or actually the stewardship aspect of governance is really all about, again, the formalizing of accountability around the management of the data to ultimately govern towards things like risk management and compliance. So I grabbed this graphic from Yahoo Graphics online. Um, I thought that it kind of said in a nutshell of where governance, risk, and compliance fit into the overall picture of business optimization and the things that need to be there to support that as well. So GRC, and when you see the term GRC used in this presentation, you know what it means. Um, GRC is a discipline that aims to synchronize information and activity across all three of these disciplines, governance, risk, management, and compliance, in order to create a 
effectiveness and efficiency. As we saw, that was some of the things that were highlighted in the graphic on the previous page. But enabling more effective information sharing and reporting to avoid the wasteful overlaps. The truth is, there are similarities between governance and, and risk management. There's a lot of similarities, and they overlap between risk management and compliance. In a lot of organizations, they tend to set up different parts of the organization to, uh, to effectively manage these three things. So GOC typically encompasses activities such as corporate governance, which may be managed by one part of the organization, enterprise risk management, and that may be data risk and it may be non-data risk, but also corporate compliance. In a lot of organizations, there are different people in the organization that have the responsibility for these three different things. And the question is, should there be three different parts of the organization? Do they all fall under one umbrella? And, and that's something that I'll talk about here quickly as well. You know, organizations oftentimes reach a size or they're already at a size where they need to coordinate the control over governance, risk, management, and compliance. In fact, uh, a friend of mine thinks of it in terms of the three-legged stool. And if you think of governance and risk management and compliance as being the three legs of a three-legged stool, they really all depend on each other. And in fact, if they're all being done individually or separately in different parts of the organization, oftentimes that causes problems. In fact, that makes it so that we can't uh, we cannot report these GRC results to our senior management, just like when senior management asks a question of any data that we have within our organization. How many customers do we have? What are the students that are most at risk? What are all the touch points for X, Y, and Z in the organization? The problem is that they're not, there's not coordinated efforts around the data. Governance uh, certainly imposes some uh, consistency across the organization, just the way that we should look at GRC together as well. So potentially in the future, um, all of these may fall under the same part of the organization. The last bullet on this page says that each of the three GRC disciplines touch and impact the same technologies, same people, same processes, the same data of the organization, yet even have a relationship between each of the items, um, it, it being done independently of each other. And I think what you'll see in the future is a movement toward GRC potentially becoming a, a separate part of the organization that manages all three of these things. I don't know if that's actually going to be the, the case, but you know, I think that if we, we look down the road a little bit, if organizations start to embra embrace these three disciplines, there's going to be a need for them to fall under the same part of the organization, under the chief operating officer, potentially, the chief data officer, since at least uh, most of those are all data-related. So when governance, risk management, and compliance are managed independently from each other, organizations typically have substantial duplication of tasks. So you talk to organizations that have different people in the organization that are identified as stewards. Well, the same stewards exist no matter whether it's it's uh, governance, uh, it's it's risk management, it's compliance, information security, anything that is a discipline associated with the data. Those people in the organization that have the responsibility to be held formally accountable for that are the same people. They're the same technologies. They're they're following the same processes. Ultimately, at some point in time, I see the three of those being brought together. So overlapping and duplicate GRC activities negatively impact you know, organizations when it comes to operational costs, confusion about responsibilities, and the ability to be able to, to report GRC metrics to our management and our organization. Internal services might be audited and assessed by multiple groups on an annual basis, and if being uh, audited and assessed independently of each other, it's certainly creating enormous cost, and you're getting disconnected results in the process of audit and assessing each of these different disciplines. So again, in the future, what I'm seeing is that at some point in time, these three disciplines are going to come together. So a connected GRC approach will also manifest itself in the inability of the organization to provide the results that they need, the reports of how successful we are to our executives. Again, you're using different data from different parts of the organization, managing different groups. It's like a badly planned transportation system. That's a great analogy that I saw. That every individual route will operate, but it will not have the 
qualities that allow them to work effectively together. Again, another reason why you may be seeing that the three of these disciplines will be coming together in the future, maybe not in the, in the too distant future, in fact. So, so do changes, a lot of changes that are taking place within organizations from a technology perspective or increases in data storage, whether it's big data or very large databases or unstructured data growing through the roof. You know, market globalization that we've got different regulations and risks based on locations at different parts of the world that we take care of. Um, increased regulations, rules are not optional, there's penalties. We're seeing that the number of GRC related requirements um, are becoming unmanageable and being done independently. So again, a reason why you may see the bringing together of GRC in most organizations. And I'd be curious if you, you have some comments on whether or not these parts of your organization are all together, are working on these three disciplines together. You know, I'd be curious to hear that from you because, again, from what I've seen in organizations, a lot of times they're being done independently. And from the study I just uh, had shared with you on the previous slides, the fact is that that becomes cumbersome to an organization, that becomes expensive, that becomes a great cost to the organization where they could streamline those and they could bring those together rather than having those all separate. So the question becomes, is governance really the umbrella under which risk and compliance reside? Or is risk management the umbrella? Or is compliance the umbrella? You know, it takes me back to the same question. I mean, are these all three equal legs of the three-legged stool, or are some more important than others? You know, it takes me back to some debates that we've had in years gone by. Is business intelligence part of knowledge management, or knowledge management part of business intelligence? I think there's different answers depending on who you ask. But I'm not sure that it really matters that, that governance needs to be the umbrella under which risk and compliance reside. The idea is that they're really all three need to work in conjunction <coughs> excuse me, with each other. Governance it happens to be the means to get to the end of and risk associated with your data and managing compliance associated with your data. So from my uh, my travels, what I have seen within organizations is that there's three different types of GRC of governance, risk management, and compliance that are taking place in organizations. And so oftentimes you'll find governance and and risk management and compliance around financial data. Around the finances of the organization, you'll find it under IT, you'll find it under legal. The question is, does your organization have all three of these? Or all three or are all three of these together under one part of the organization? You know, are there different types of uh, are different types of GRC coordinated with each other? What are the differences? Let's just spend a quick moment here talking about the different types of GRC. There's, there's financial GRC, which is related to the activities intended to ensure correct operation of financial processes. And most organizations have some level of financial GRC taking place. In fact, that's where most organizations tend to start. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about financial data in a minute and talk about how important governance and management and compliance is to the financial data, but is it really any different from any other data in your organization? Maybe it's just that there's more rules and regulations associated with the data. Um, IGRC, so again, IT, governance, risk management, and compliance relate to the activities intended to ensure that IT, that the IT organization support the current and future needs of the business and complies with all the mandates that are being imposed upon on them. And a lot of organizations have this. They have some levels of formal IT governance or even informal IT governance, but there is some level of governance taking place in the IT area to make certain that the actions and the activities of the IT organization are there to support the needs of the organization when it comes to all their information and database uh, related mandates. So some organizations have this. Most organizations tend to have the financial GRC. The last one is the legal GRC. And, and legal GRC focuses on tying together all three components via uh, all three components, that being of governance, risk management, and compliance, being organizational legal departments. And, and those organizations that have chief compliance officers that oftentimes sit at the top of the charge when it comes to legal GRC. So there's certainly one type of GRC that we're talking about here. There's the financial, there's the IT, and there's the legal GRC. And the question that I pose to you is, do you have any of those? 
Do you have people that are responsible for those? Are they the same people? Are there duplications of effort? Are there overlaps? Do we need, need to take a look at that and somehow bring the three of them together under one part of the organization? And as I said before, I think you're going to see that in the future. Um, in my search on the Internet around GRC, very quickly I came up with uh, this one organization, databaseanswers.org, put together this quick hit data model for governance, risk management, and compliance. And what I want to do is highlight the three important aspects of this. The first one being that governance tends to focus on the roles and responsibilities, the formatting of the process, the identification, the communications with the people to let them know what their role is, what rules they need to follow as well. Then there's the risk management piece of it, which is some, which included something that was kind of new to me, which were chief risk indicators, and I'm going to talk about those in a second as well. But then there's also compliance. It was, what I thought was really interesting uh, about this diagram is that so much of it tended to focus on what was all, all the way to the right of the diagram, which is documents or the documentation that, that spells out governance and who does what with the data and who has what accountability, spells out what the risks are associated with the data and the actions that the organization are taking to mitigate those risks. The compliance rules. A lot of organizations, again, will, will in, expect that they individuals, even down to the operational level, are compliant to the rules, but how much of an effort is there for the, to, to get the, those rules into those people's hands so that they know the rules, to give them refreshers on the rules, to help them, again, to comply to regulatory controls in the organization. When this take place in organizations, or when people do things in the organization that they shouldn't with the data, Oftentimes, that's because they don't know the rules associated with it. So we, as data people within our organization, need to do a better job of documenting the rules associated with the risks associated with the data and documenting the rules associated with compliance around the data and documenting the roles and, re the roles and responsibilities associated with management and compliance. They all fall into the category of metadata. And metadata becomes a, a very important aspect of being any of those three disciplines or all of those three disciplines. The presentation that I'm giving at the Data Governance Winter Conference in Fort Lauderdale in December talks about the relationship between the metadata and governance. In fact, you really can't do governance without metadata, uh, information about the data, information about the people that are associated with the data. I state in that presentation that metadata is basically a... Um, a, a byproduct of putting governance in place because we're identifying who does what with the data. We need to document that information. I've shared it before in a common data matrix, and I'm going to share a version of that here in a future in, in a future slide in this deck. Um, just so you know that again, the metadata becomes very critical to managing risk, managing compliance in an organization. So the term, or there was a term that was on a previous slide, talked about a key risk indicator. Oftentimes you'll hear about key performance indicators, but I will give you a definition that I took from Tech Targets. Um, a key risk indicator is a metric for measuring the likelihood that the combined probability of an event and its consequence will exceed the organization's risk, act, risk appetite and have a profound negative impact on the organization. Um, if you do uh, some research on KRIs, you'll get lists of those on the internet, but the question really becomes is how many of those are truly associated with the data? So maybe what we really need to do is identify key data risk indicators as part of our governance initiative and have to communicate those key data risk indicators out to all the people that define, produce, and use data as part of their job. And like most of the organizations that I deal with, almost everybody defines, produces, or uses data as part of their job. So we know who they are, and we need to share with them these things that we may call key data risk indicators. So all I've done is taken the definition of a key risk indicator and added the word data to say that a key risk, a key data risk indicator is a metric for measuring the likelihood that a combined probability of a data event consequences will exceed the organization's data risk appetite and so on and so forth and have a profoundly negative impact on the organization. So if you use the term KPI, and you use the, the term KRI, um, that there be something else that's in there as well, a key data risk indicator. And so organizations 
organizations we are hearing every day of different organizations that are in the news associated with data breaches, whether that's somebody who hacked their system or somebody who got access to credit card numbers and, and customer information. Just in the recent months, we've seen Target and Kmart and Home Depot and even Dunkin' Donuts. I believe it was Dunkin' Donuts that was also on the list where their customer information was being stolen. Or people got access to the customer data when they weren't supposed to get access to the data. So the questions become, are organizations becoming more blasé about data risks? Are organizations become more diligent? I mean, we're hearing more and more about these data breaches in the news, but the more we hear about them, you'd think that organizations would be focusing more and more on them. So I think organizations are becoming more and more diligent. They're building these 10 foot walls around their data. But the problem is that if we build a 10 foot wall around our data, somebody somewhere out there is going to develop a 12 foot ladder to get over that wall. Well, the thing, the same thing may hold true for our governance, risk, and compliance issues as well. You know, we may build all of this into our culture, our organization, but somebody somewhere may be trying to build a, a ladder taller than the wall that we're putting around the data. Um, and you know, the fact is that rules keep changing and rules keep becoming expanded and the meanings of the rules continue to change. If we don't have governance built into um, the data activities for individuals and the communications of the rules associated with the data built into the processes, then the fact is that we're going to see more and more of these data breaches. We're going to be seeing more and more of these, um, these risk factors that are going to um, hurt the organization. We're going to see more and more compliance rules being broken. We need to make certain that communication becomes a key part of our, our governance uh, initiative moving forward. I run out of time really quickly here, so I just want to go through a couple slides here really quickly. You know, six questions to ask about our risky data. You know, do we need to govern our risky data more than we need to govern other data? Well, the fact is, really, no. We need to govern all data the same way. All data seems to have rules. Um, but should we focus initially on that data that's going to put us at risk first? And we're finding that a lot of organizations are doing that. They're focusing on their financial data, which is sometimes more heavily regulated than other data, um, or at least they see it's more heavily regulated. So the question again becomes, is financial data different from any data in your organization? Well, certainly because it's a different subject matter because of where it comes from. Some organizations will say, you know, we need to manage our financial data the same way that we manage any data in our organization. Our financial data more heavily regulated? Well, maybe, yes, maybe no. You know, there's a lot of different rules that are being imposed upon us. I did a presentation for the Federal Reserve Board recently, and I took a list off their website of all of the different rules that, that or at least a bunch of the, a subset of the rules that the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System are imposing upon organizations. And those two pages that you see on this slide here, that's only a piece, not more rules than that. So if we think that we can manage the risk associated with data we, or with the governance or, or associated with the data through the governance and we can manage compliance, then we need to make certain that we take these rules out from under the covers and put them in the hands of the people that they're going to be impacting every single day in the organization. So we need to document. We need to create that metadata. That was in the data model that we spoke about earlier. And are there more people who handle financial data? Well, I guess that all depends on the type of organization that you're in. Oftentimes, more attention is paid to financial data. And again, in some organizations will say, no, it's just data. We need to have the same level of governance, not only for financial data, but for any data in the organization. Is it used in more decisions? Well, again, it depends on the type of organization that you're in. We need to emphasize on financial data first. Well. If you attend the Finance Data uh, Governance Conference last week, a lot of those individuals will say that they, they really need to focus, buckle down on their financial data first before they start jumping into the other types of data in the organization. Um, is it an asset? Well, no. The, the financial data is an asset to the organization the same way all the other data is an asset to the organization. We govern financial data any differently? I would say that if you put a single program in place around governance, risk, and compliance, or you at least have them all working in conjunction with each other, that, that we don't really need to govern financial data any different. We may need to go govern patient or personal health information or personally identifiable information. So really, the answer to the question is, should we do it differently? I don't really think there's an answer to that question. 
I think it depends on your organization, what data is most important to you, and how it's being used within the organization. I shared this diagram in many of the webinars that I've done just because uh, people have labeled it as a picture worth a thousand words. Well, the truth is that those four principles down the middle of this diagram become a lot of the core principles that organizations follow when they're putting governance in place. And it should be a surprise that they must be managed to follow internal and external rules and regulations are a big part of that. So again, we need to focus our governance on making certain that we know the rules, that we document the rules, that we communicate the rules, that we enforce the rules to people within the organization. And people know those rules already. That's what senior management tells us. Why don't they know the rules if, if they don't know the rules? Because the fact is that oftentimes governance is not made a priority within an organization. The communications associated with governance is not made a priority. So if we take those four core principles down the middle as being the most important principles around governance, certainly they should be managed to follow internal and external rules and regulations becomes a piece of that. So risk management and data governance, the same thing. Risk management, the definition in uh, freedictionary.com is it's techniques used to minimize and prevent accidental loss to a business. Identification, and assessment, and prioritization of risks by coordinating an economical application of resources to minimize, monitor, and control the probability or the impact of unfortunate events. If you have a chance, take a look at the book that I mentioned here, The Failure of Risk Management, why it's broken and how to fix it. A lot of what is implied in that book is that we need to execute and enforce authority over that data. We need to formalize accountability and bring those two together in order to make governance work within our organization. So we certainly come from a whole bunch of different areas. There's uncertainty in the financial markets. There's threats from failure of projects, there's legal liabilities, there's credit risks, all of which may be considered to be compliance issues. But there's also accidents and natural causes and disasters and deliberate attacks, a lot of the things that we read about and we hear about in the news that are impacting organizations. You know, when it comes to putting guns in place, we really want a lot of organizations are focusing first on the compliance aspect of it and making certain again that the rules are documented and the rules are communicated and they're forced by the people of the organization that define, produce, and use data as part of their job. So is compliance or is risk management and, and governance the same thing? Again, the way I view it is, is that governance is, again, the execution and enforcement of authority over that data um, and over the rules that we have associated with the data. I would say they're not the same thing, but they're connected at the hip. They're, they're two of the three legs of the leg gets stolen. Again, the three legs would be risk management, governance, and compliance. Full out and the stool's gonna fall over. That's the, the whole analogy of the of the three legged stool. So the definition I used of governance was the execution and enforcement of authority, stewardship, the formalization of accountability. You know, risk management where is where a lot of organizations start to formalize this level of governance. Organizations start to formalize accountability is when it comes to compliance rules, when it comes to risk management rules within the organization. So they're very closely related, but they are not they are not the same thing. Um, governance becomes an end to get to the means of compliance and managing risk associated with data in the organization. What I want here is spend a few minutes talking about a couple of case studies or a couple of uh, organizations that I've had the pleasure of working with recently. One is the Department of State of Health and Welfare within a state the sole emphasis of their governance program was on protecting sensitive data. They had a two-year-long project that they are in the throes of right now where they want to document the rules and create a rules repository that they can then direct people to so that they understand all of the rules, all of the risks associated with protecting sensitive data. In another organization in, the, in Pennsylvania, in fact, uh, it was an investment management company. The sole focus of their initiative was on information security and making sure that the data was secured in, within the organization. A large university I worked with had a data classification policy prior to my getting there. Again, they had rules associated with highly confidential data, confidential data, sensitive and public data. Uh, again, their focus was on risk management around data classification and how they were going to 
enforce data classification rules. A couple of other medical school at a university was protecting sensitive data, personal identifiable and personal health information. A health insurance company that I'm working with right now, their focus is on data sharing, extraction, and vocabulary. What I want to do is I want to share with you a slide that, that's a, a work in progress from that organization, and you'll see that these guidelines and these rules associated with the data become a main topic of the, the processes associated with governance. At the end of the day, what they're trying to do is execute and enforce authority over the protection of that sensitive data in the organization. Now, I know this diagram may be a little bit difficult to read because some of the writing on it is pretty small, and I apologize for that. But if you'll see, this is a process that an organization is putting in place for people who are going to request data, people that are going to request reports. The emphasis of their governance initiative is on data sharing, data extraction, and, and building an improved vocabulary around the data. And if you follow through the process, you can see that a requester now being forced to, to complete a, request or a, a form with the information that they need to document about the requests that are taking place. Off to the far end of this diagram, you'll see that there's a metadata platform of where we're going to move this information about the request, about the rules and guidelines, about the reports and the data themselves that are being created. They're all going to be stored off into a metadata platform. But the point that I wanted to make with this slide and what I wanted to show you was this aspect that I'm that I was circled in red here. And that once a request has gone through the formal request process and is given to the manager of data management or whatever you want to call that person within your organization, there's a decision point to be made. Um, you take that information that was was requested on a uh, for a report or in a data set and bound up against the rules that are associated with that data. Is this personal health information? Is this personally identifiable information? Is this Arbanes-Oxley information? Uh, information? You know, we need to make certain that certain data that can and cannot be shared, that people in the organization, through their request, they can't just ask data or ask for a report, need to understand the rules associated with the data that is associated with that report. And so, Built, they built this into the process of we need to bounce these requests up against these rules and guidelines. And so the interesting thing that they're doing is that if a, if a uh, rule or guideline has not been set, rule or guideline needs to be set before that data request can be completed and before that report request can be completed. If that rule or guideline already exists, they can go back to the data, the manager of data management who can then uh, assign the uh, request to a resource who can then create the outcome of the, of the request. But again, the rules and guidelines become such a critical piece of the overall picture for requesting data, for sharing data, for extracting data. And again, the idea is that we, we want to make certain that we're recording those rules and we're communicating them effectively to people within the organization. Compliance, uh, regulatory compliance, adherence to standards, regulations, other requirements, we need to make certain that those rules are captured. Are compliance and governance the same thing? Again, I would say no. I would say that governance is a means towards that end. And that without governance, how can we make certain that people know that they have a relationship to the data, that they need to comply with certain aspects, certain rules associated with the data? So governance is really a means to the end of having compliant data. And at the end of the day, at some organizations, it's all executing and enforcing risk management and compliance rules across the organization, kind of taking my definition and making it more to address the topics that we're talking about today. So risk management and compliance can become the face of data governance in your organization. They can become the reason why we need to do data governance in the first place. You know, it's something that we're doing already. Uh, that's something that we should emphasize. If we are, because in most organizations, I tell them that you're already governing data, but you're oftentimes doing it very inefficiently, very ineffectively, uh, very informally uh, as well. And so what we need to do is put some formalization around those accountabilities. So risk management compliance might be the reason why we do governance in the first place, but since we're already doing it, maybe some of those rules, um, some of the roles, R-O-L-E-S, are already defined. If we understand that they're going to be held formally accountable, governance is the way that we're going to get there. 
We're going to help to communicate the rules. We're going to be able to formalize existing accountabilities by putting the information into the hands of the people that define, produce, and use data as part of their daily job. So not optional, therefore, we must have a governance plan to address all, say, all three of these, gut risk and clients. Um, they need to have a plan that brings those three together. So how can we make risk and compliance the face of data governance? Well, one of the things that we can do is we can inventory who does what with data across the organization. And we can formalize how we document and make those rules available to those people that we've just inventoried across the organization. Now, oftentimes, you'll see me talk about something that I call a common data matrix, a tool that we can use to catalog who does what with data across the organization. And I'm sharing with you a version of the, the common data matrix that I've shared so often. And very simply stated, this is a cross, this is a two-dimensional spreadsheet that references the type of data that we have in our organization. I can draw a little bit on here as well. Um, the, the type of, no, that was the wrong icon to press. And so on the left-hand side of the matrix, we've got the different types of data that are important to our organization. We've got those types bro broken into domains, maybe even into subdomains. And then we've identified, if you move over to the right in that uh, in the diagram, you'll, you'll notice that we list the systems that that type of data resides in. And who in IT has the knowledge and the responsibility for that data. And in the different corporate units and business units in the organization, who are the definers, producers, and users of that data? That data, these rules are going to apply to. And if we document and record those rules somewhere and share those with the people, how do we expect that they're ultimately going to manage risk and comply if they don't know what the rules are associated with managing the risk and complying? Uh, here's the operating model diagram that I've shared very often as well. As well. And it's just uh, the reason why I'm sharing it here is that it's kind of color coordinated with the previous slide. You can see where the different roles, the roles are defined within the period diagram. And in the common data matrix, it actually becomes a reality of, well, where do they exist in the organization and what data is it that they need to know the risk management rules associated with uh, data and the compliance rules. In fact, another organization, a different version of the common data matrix that looks something like this. And an organization that I mentioned before that was focusing on classification of data. Highly sensitive data, and that's the data that depicted in that here. There's the sensitive data that's in yellow, and there's the public data that's in green. And so in this diagram, again, what we're doing is we're cross-referencing the different types of data with the different parts of the organization that use it. But the thing I wanted to highlight on this slide was what I've circled in red, or put a square around in red, and that's the rules associated with each of the different types of data. Somebody has to have the accountability to document those rules Somebody has to have the responsibility to communicate those rules to everybody in the organization that's expected to be compliant and to manage risk, especially associated with data. And our management will tell us that that's pretty much everybody in the organization. So if we do a better job of documenting those rules and sharing those rules with people, how can we be expected to manage risk? How can we be expecting to be compliant to the rules that are, are being imposed upon us? Risk management and, and compliance in terms of, of reserve laws, international laws, classification rules, security rules, operational rules, business rules in the organization. Those are just some examples of different types of risk management and compliance rules that we have around us in our organization. But we can measure governance in terms of risk and compliance is what percentage of our rules are documented and what percentage of those rules are linked to the data specifically and how many of those are being made available to the people that have hands on that, that data. So how often is it being communicated? How often is it being refreshed? Because these rules associated with risk management and compliance are forever changing. So we can't just communicate with them once and that's it. We need to make sure that we refresh those rules. How many of those rules are being analyzed and are being reported when when the when the rules uh, when the the rules are being followed? How many rules are being broken? How many rules are being followed? Those are things that we can measure. Uh, we measure governance in terms of risk and compliance in our organization. 
And you're probably familiar with ISO. And ISO has stated that risk management should do the following 10 things. It should, it should create value. It'd be an integral part of organization's processes, uh, decision-making, address uncertainty, all of those things. I don't want to read through each of them individually, but you can see that's really what risk management is all about. And if you've attended my webinars in the past, you'll know that when I talk about things in terms of invasive data governance, they should do the same thing. It should, create, it should create value. It should become an integral part of our processes. In fact, we should build governance into existing processes wherever we can, again, in our attempt to stay as non-invasive as possible, to become part of the decision-making process. We need to address uncertainty. We need to be systematic and structured in how we go about doing it. It needs to be tailored to fit the culture of the organization. So ISO is telling us around, uh, around risk management, I think that the same principles apply to non-invasive data governance as well. So what are the consequences of ungoverned risk management and ungoverned compliance? Well, we have informal best practices. We have informal roles and responsibilities. There's a lot of informal accountability. If there's any accountability in the organization, typically there is. One of the things that I suggest by staying non-invasive is that we look who is accountable and let's document who they are, whether it's in the common data matrix or in whatever tools we're using, uh, workflow tools. We need to go from being informally accountable to being accountable. We need to go from having informal communications around the rules associated with management and compliance to formal communications. An informal action plan to add to formal formal definition, formal enforcement of the rules. That's really what governance is all about. So governance and risk management are not the same. Governance and compliance are not the same. Governance is truly the means that we will follow to get to the end having a successful risk management practice within our organization and a successful compliance um, compliance practice within our organization. What are some of the consequences of ungoverned risk management and compliance data? Well, if we break the rules, we get caught, we pay the consequences, you know, maybe I'm going a little bit overboard with the last things that I listed here, but tragedy, despair, hopelessness, train wreck, really bad things happen when we have ungoverned risk management and we have ungoverned compliance. And the way towards formalizing those are to formalize the way that we apply accountability within our organization. And my suggestion is the non-invasive approach. So my final words are follow rule, following the rules is not optional. Accountability needs to not be optional. Oftentimes the accountability is already there, and you ask your management whether or not they think that this accountability is optional. And if they know it can't be optional, then what we need to do, we need to make certain that our governance approach includes formalizing who the stewards are, recording who the stewards are, and pre communications with those stewards. So we need to formalize our approach. We need to be non-invasive in our approach. Um, before we take any questions, and I don't know if there's any questions or not, um, please uh, submit them to me after the webinar if, if necessary. But just again, to let you know what are the upcoming webinars. In November, we'll be talking about selecting the right approach to governance. In December, we'll be talking about big data governance. And you can register online at Dataversity um, for the webinars, and I hope to see you there. Uh, this session, we covered these things, risk management and data governance. Risk management is the face of governance. Governance in terms of risk management, um, using them to explain governance and the fact that None of these things are not optional in our organization, and we need to use that fact that they're not optional as the crux for a success in our organization. And I would like to turn it back over to my friend, Shannon, to see if there's any Thanks, Bob, and thanks for another great presentation. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time left for questions, but the most popular question, of course, is if people asking if they will receive a copy of the presentation. And just a reminder that I will send a follow-up email for this webinar by end of day Monday with links to the slides, links to the recording, and anything else requested throughout the webinar. I don't see any questions coming in quite yet other than those. If there's anything out there, just make sure you type it in the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen if we don't have time to ask them or address them in this particular live event, then we can certainly get those questions to Bob and get those out in the follow-up email. What's the, just, you know, just one last question here. What is, what's the most common question you get about this 
particular topic from companies that you work work with? They want to know how do they bring these issues together? How do they use governance as their end to get to management and compliance? And the easiest answer that I have for them typically is that they need to document the rules, they need to document the risks, they need to communicate them to all the people in the organization that they know have some level of accountability for following those rules. That seems to be the, the most asked question that I get. All right, that's all we have time for today. And just to remind if you want to meet Bob in person, you can meet him at the Data Governance Winter Conference in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You can uh, happening December 8th through 12th. Bob, thank you for another great presentation, and thanks to so much to our attendees for uh, participating today, and I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you, everybody.